This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey everybody, my name is Mike Hermes and welcome to my channel. Well guys, if you're into 3D art, then at some point you have or you will create a turntable or a demo reel or a show reel, okay? Now there are several applications out there that can help you to do that and one of them is Marmoset Toolback, alright? So what we're going to do today is we're going to load up a model in Marmoset Toolbag. We're going to set up a rendering for a model and do a render shot. And in addition, we are going to do a turntable of that model. All right? Well, that's it. Here we go. Have fun. Okay, guys, here we go. We're in uh, Marmoset Toolbag 2.08. And uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to load up a low poly mesh that I created in Maya. And it's a game prop of a TNT um, plunger. Okay, so we're gonna go up to uh, file and import model, and here is my low poly. Okay, I'm just gonna switch out this background because it's a bit too bright. So I'm gonna double click on this guy, go to presets, and find something more suitable. Okay, and done. Now, as you can see, nothing applied to this model. Uh, again, it's the low poly model, okay? So we're gonna apply the maps to it that I created, uh, normal map, specular, ambient occlusion, and so forth. So for that, I'm gonna go up and click default. Now, you could go into the presets and, for example, use an Unreal template uh, if you model towards that game engine, but I'm just gonna use the default, okay? So I'm gonna click on normal map, and let's plug that guy in. And then I'm going to click on my albedo. I'm going to plug in my diffuse map for that one. We're going to go to specular map and I'll plug that in. And then I'm going to go down here to uh, occlusion map, activate that, hit occlusion and plug that in as well. Okay. So without tweaking anything else, I'm just going to left click and drag and drop that onto my model. All right. So this is the default. You can see that it's quite shiny. So we're going to tweak this a little bit. We're going to go in. Uh, first, we're going to turn off the gloss map. We're going to go into the specular and we're going to bring that down. And let's see, we'll bring the occlusion down as well. Just to make that look a bit brighter. OK, so for the basics, that is pretty much it. Maybe I'll just bring down the um, specularity just a bit more but all in all it doesn't look too bad okay so now that we have this what we're going to do first is we are going to go in to our render tab and here there are a bunch of settings actually hang on go back uh scene yeah here we're going to go to our main camera first here are a bunch of settings that we can play with and we're going to go to the post effect okay so for example the tone you can adjust the tone of your scene with this slider just to make it pop. You can increase contrast if you like, not go crazy on that. You have the, uh, the contrast center where you want that to be. And saturation, if you, for example, want it to be black and white or kind of look old school, this is completely black and white. This looks a bit old school and bring that up makes it pop. Okay. You can sharpen it up a bit if you like. Um, bloom, I don't typically like that. It kind of makes your object glow and uh, I'm just not a fan, so I'm not going to use it. As far as vignetting, if we bring that way up, you see that the corners kind of come in and makes that black. But because we're going to use a black background for our render shot, it, there's really no point. So we're not going to do that. And then we have grain and I don't use that either. So we're going to leave that out. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go up to our sky, our background, and we're going to go to the uh, brightness of our backdrop and we're going to bring that way down. So it's completely black. Okay. Don't get confused by this one uh, because if you do that, then your entire image is going to go black. Okay. So we got that. What we're going to do next is we're going to do a single render shot. So we're going to go up to the render tab. Let's see if we want to change anything here. For the resolution, we're going to make sure that we have a ratio one to one. And then we're simply going to go up to capture and select image. And that is it. Okay. 
So what happened? Well, if you go up to capture and show output folder, you will see that this image has been created and this is our single render shot, so that's cool. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a turntable. So for that, again, we're gonna go up to capture and believe it or not, the only thing you need to do is hit turntable. Before we do that, I'm just gonna bring this guy back a little bit and make sure that your model has its pivot point centered in the middle because this guy is going to turn around and if your pivot point is way off then it's going to go out of screen okay so i like this position right here so i'm just going to hit turntable and you can see that it's rendering not really much to it we'll just uh, have that run out okay and what I'll do next is I'll uh, pause the video, I'll jump into my video editing software, and I'll take the individual 30 JPEGs that have been created, stitch them together to show you the end result as a little video file, okay? Now, before we do that, guys, I'd like to take the opportunity to ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my videos. That would really mean a lot to me and it would keep me going, okay? So that said, let's uh, jump into the video editing software. Here we go. All right, here we go. So I just um, you know, did this uh, on the fly very quickly without tweaking anything. So if I just hit play here, you'll see that our model rotates nicely. And uh, depending on the duration of each image, you can decide how fast or slow this will move. Uh, this looks a bit choppy because I didn't exactly calculate the uh, spacing in between, okay? But this will give you an idea how easy it is to create that turntable, all right? Now, the next question that I got for you guys is this. If you have a demo reel or a show reel, or if you make a turntable based on this tutorial, can you please share a link of your turntable? I'd love to see it and I will share it on my website for others to enjoy. Okay, so looking forward to what you guys come up with. And that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.